Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I want to take a look at the Vivor cross slide milling table. Just for the record, Vivor did send this to me for the purpose of this review. I did not have to pay for it. I will put links to it below as well as a coupon code to get it to, I think it's 5% off. This is $126.99 with free shipping on Vivor's website. It is model number 450 by 170. That is the size 450 millimeters this way, 170 millimeters that way. That is 17.7 by 6.7 inches. And it has a stroke this way of 185 or 7 inches and 9 30 seconds. 105 millimeters this way or 4 and 9 60 fourths. And the mounting holes are 135 by 165. I can't read my own writing. I'll let you figure that out. And the table height is 100 millimeters or roughly 4 inches. So, I didn't show you the unboxing because it comes fully assembled with the exception of the hand wheels and the knobs and the nuts and screws for it. It takes about 5 minutes to put it back, to, to put it together. It also comes unlubed completely dry or without there was a little bit of protection on the top of the table for rust and it's unadjusted so the first thing you have to do when you get it out of the box after putting on the wheels and the knobs is you have to adjust it and it really isn't that hard to do this has what's called ways and gibbs and if we look down here you'll see these are the ways this dovetail you can see this big dovetail the whole table sits on. Those are what's called the ways. If I'm getting this wrong, you know, let me know below. My brother was the machinist in the family. I'm a tinker, backyard, hot rodder type of guy. So, and then these plates that run across, you can see them right in there. Those are the gibbs. And then these adjustments under here, these tighten the gib down to take all the slop out. So it needs to be lubed. And as you can see, the machining on this is still pretty rough. So if you really want this thing to shine, you're going to need to take it apart. You're going to need to smooth all of these sliding surfaces down so they smooth on, they, they slide on each other like, you know, almost like an ice cube on a piece of glass when they're lubed, of course. And put it all back together and adjust it. It's not that big of a deal to do on something like this. I'm not going to do it right now because... Uh, I really want to kind of review it as it comes, but I have lubed it. I have adjusted it as best I could. These wing nuts here, these are, I'm not sure what these are for. I haven't seen these on a milling table before. They are either to lock it in place so it can't move, or they're just there to give you some little quickie added adjustment just to take the slop out while you're trying to do something. Not 100% short. It's got thrust bearings in here on both ends let's flip it up i've got it set it on set on these blocks so that i can turn the wheels without them contacting the table but if we tip it up we can see underneath of it it is cast iron and if i don't know if i mentioned it it does weigh about 65 pounds it is i think a diamond in the rough if you need something along these ouch along these lines and with it adjust, one thing I did note as I adjusted it and as I put it together, I could not tighten these nuts down very much before I bound the handle up. That's something, these, these handles are probably going to have to be put on something and have the top machined off. It probably put a, you know, a piece of, a piece of sandpaper down on a concrete floor and just run them back and forth. They do have, I don't know if you can see it, they do have graduation markings. They could be a little deeper and a little easier to see, but they are there. Both of them have it. So you want it, you want it to be able to turn fairly easily, but you want to get the slop out of it. And that is really where smoothing these down really well comes into play. You can get more slop out and still have it be I still have it move fairly easily. I kind of got it at a happy medium. The more slop you have, the more chatter you're going to get when you try and mill. 
and the less accurate you're going to be able to be. Fortunately for what I want to do, I think it will work the way it is for now. Let's talk about the surface of the table for a minute. I do not have a mill level straight edge, but what I do have suggests that that's been milled pretty flat. I think it's pretty flat. It's certainly flat enough for what I'm going to use it for. Now, these slots here, these are for T-nuts. Now, I do not have a T-nut that fits this. Vivor says it's an M10, but that, it may be an M10 stud that goes into the T-nut, but that is not an M10 sized, sized T-slot. That is more like a half inch T-slot. Half inch is one of the few sizes of T-nuts I don't have floating around. I have five eighths and I have like eight millimeters and 10 millimeters, but I do not have anything that's half inch. So what I did was I went and got some half inch carriage bolts, a carriage bolt, this in here, this part in the center is half inch. And then I ground that down and I'll get some measurements for you. And they slide in and will work perfectly for this. Now, my intention eventual use of this is not going to be to use these or use T-nuts. But that's a video for another time. And we will probably be revisiting this later on. Let's get a measurement on these. Not sure if I can do this while I'm holding the camera, but let's give it a shot. And let's do it in metric because everything else on this is in metric. Let's turn it this way because I think that way we'll be able to see it. So the outside, the large portion of that T-nut is 20.87 millimeters. And the inside portion, like I said, it's half inch because this is a half inch carriage bolt. It is, can we see that? 12.75 um, millimeters. So... If you're trying to make something or get a T-nut, those are the sizes that you need. So now you're going to ask, but Chuck, what are you going to do with this? You've already got a desktop CNC machine. And I know, I do have a desktop CNC machine. But a friend of mine has a little business opportunity and he needs a part made. Just as kind of an experiment to see if his idea will work. So he gave me some drawings and some dimensions. And I drew it up real quick in Fusion 360. And I 3D printed him one, and he thinks it'll work. The problem is, the 3D printed plastic one, even in nylon, would not last 10 seconds where it's going to be put. Now, 10 seconds it would, but it wouldn't last long enough to really, you know, be a proof of concept. The, the final one is probably going to have to be made out of some super hard steel. But he asked me if I could make one out of aluminum. And I said, well, yeah, I guess I can. And um, it's not a really complex part, and it's not large, and it doesn't require any heavy milling. So I could do it over here, but this is just not ideal for a number of different reasons. We may go into that into another video, but that's not this one. So my plan is to use this, and this is where y'all are going to get down in the comment section below and start typing furiously. And go ahead, you know, I know you got to get it out of your systems. I get it. I understand. Uh, but don't think I don't already know what y'all are going to tell me. My idea is to put that over on here and make that first little part over here. This is a drill press. Yes, I know. A drill press has a tapered chuck. It's not designed for lateral pressure like that. It can knock the chuck off of the taper and then the chuck will come flying off and spinning and cut your head off and kill your dog and probably go into your neighbor's house and kill all them too. Also, a drill press bearings are not designed for that type of pressure either. So this is something I don't recommend you do or certainly don't recommend you do much of and don't recommend you do without understanding what might happen. So with that being said, if y'all are done typing, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Let's see how it works. Okay, once you have your drill, once you have your mill table mounted, if you're on a drill plus press like I do, or if actually no matter what you do it on, you're going to have to do what's called tram it. And if you're a 3D printing person as well, you know that's the same as leveling your bed. As your bed moves back and forth and in and out, this has to stay the same distance from it. So the simplest way I find to do it 
is stick something in here. A wooden dowel will work. Um, I'm using a Phillips screwdriver bit, but it, it really doesn't matter. Don't use a don't use anything that will scratch the table up. So don't use and you don't want to break a drill bit or your milling tool. So use something that won't scratch it and has some give. I'm using a, say a Phillips screwdriver bit. Stick your stick your Phillips on your excuse me your feeler gauge under it, and then you're just going to move it back and forth. And I don't need more than a few inches of stroke here. And just keep rechecking it. I already did this off camera. Okay, so I think I'm ready to give this its first try. And just for the record, I cannot even bolt this down in all four spots to my drill press. I can only get it front or back. So I have it bolted down to the front. And I have the back held on with clamps, vice grip clamps. And all my tooling, I have a quarter, a quarter inch, four flute, end mill in it. And it's a used one, and most of the stuff I've got has been damaged, which is why it's in my used drawer. So anyway, this is about as sketchy as it gets. So anything you do with this almost has to be better. So, sorry, forgot to start the camera, so I've done a little bit. Let me um, brush that off so you can see it. I'm only trying to take about, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch down. And honestly, that turned out better than I thought it was going, going to. Now that the camera's running, let's keep going. Well, I gotta tell you that um that turned out pretty good. I'll show it to you better here when I get it. Turned out far far better than I thought this was going to. Let's come to right there. All right, I like that depth. Now let's cut that flat. I think I'm gonna have to be this way a bit. Let's see what we can do. That might be too much, but we'll find out. That might be okay. There we go there. One other thing I want to do is I want to see if I can plunge cut and then widen it out into a rectangular hollow. So I'm going to reset up for that right now. So let's give it a go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my depth right there. But I don't think I'm going to go any deeper than that. And now I'm just going to cut myself my... Thank you. 
All right, let's stop and let's take a look at all this. Okay, I took it off my drill press so I could cut my little outro here with it. Here is the work I did with it. This is the this first little, can you see it? This first little um, U-shaped cut, about a sixteenth of an inch deep. I thought it did that really, really well. I'm shocked I didn't get more chatter than that doing that on a drill press. I really am shocked. This is the trough I cut, probably, I don't know, quarter inch deep maybe. And the only reason that looks so rough is because I was doing it by feel and I wasn't maintaining a nice smooth edge. I'd go a little further one time and not as much the next time. So when I do that for real, I'm going to have to set up stops. But that's fine. Stops aren't hard to set up. And then here is that D cut I did. And that actually turned out super good. I'm really impressed with that. I think with a more solid mount, and a um, new cutter, I would be doing even better than I'm doing. But um, honestly, this worked far better than I really expected it to. This is really heavy duty. I think this Vivor mill table is a diamond in the rough. It absolutely, to get much use out of it, I think you're absolutely going to want to take it apart and smooth these machine surfaces down get everything smooth you're going to need to do something with these wheels so you can tighten the nuts down um, so they don't bind get it all smoothed up fitted and lubricated and i think for a home hobbyist backyard hot rodder mad scientist tinkerer type like me i think this is something that would really come in handy even if you don't use it often just having it under the bench and being able to put it up on the drill press or whatever other device you have and being able to cut yourself a keyway, put a, a D-shaped in a side of a round piece of round stock, I think it'd be a great thing to have. Anyway, like I said, I've got links below, $126 and some change with 5% off. And thank you guys for watching and thanks again to Vivor for sending this out and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye for now.